Thank you, Ketil. Uh, so now we have a short presentation for you, uh, where first I'll go through some of the more generic information around the beads, then a little bit more about streptavidin beads in general, and then we will discuss more about the applications that the beads can be used for, and Ketil will help us through that session. And then the last part will be Dynabeads for in vitro transcription that Maria is an expert on and she will take that part. So just as you are um, aware of that all the Dynabeads that we have in the Thermocation Scientific Portfolio, they are sold exclusively by Veritas Corporation in Japan. So they are your contact um, persons. So we will start the introduction with uh, Dynabeads, a little bit generic information about the beads. And we were the first pioneer of the magnetic beads in the market. And we invented magnetic beads 35 years ago. And we are still the only company that has truly monosized magnetic beads. Uh, and we do have a lot of publications. And because of the high quality of the beads, these are used in several uh, billions IVD tests annually. We have a large commercial business, which Maria is a part of. And, and we sell a lot of beads uh, for commercial use that are used in IVD assays. Uh, and that is because we are known for very high quality our uh, results very high reproducibility and non-specific binding and very ease of use. If you look at the picture to the bottom, if you see the A, that is the Dynabeads. And these are, as I mentioned, all the same size. They are monosized. And you also see they have a very, very smooth surface. And that is why they have a very high reproducibility and, and very low non-specific binding. And then on pictures B and C and D, you see some other alternative vendors in the market where they call magnetic beads or magnetic particles. They, some of them look more like cornflakes or sponges. And you can see that it's not very easy to get reproducibility with these kind of sponges. And also you, easier to get unspecific binding when you have these very uneven structures that uh, proteins can bind to. So that is why the Dynabees are often preferred when high quality uh, results are acquired. And just a few other facts on the beads. We do have them in several sizes from one micrometer to 4.5 micrometer in diameter. Uh, they do have a very high magnetic content, so the beads move very fast to the magnets, and that's why we don't have the need for use columns. These are only tubes and a magnet. And because of the way we manufacture them, they have a very, very high long shelf life. They're very stable beads. Usually there are around 24 months to 36 months. Some kits are 18 months, but that's due to antibodies or other reagents that we have separate as a part of the kits. Um, as I said, very high reproducibility, so uh, the CV is very low. Everyone is within 5% of their size range. And also we have reproducibility not only due to the fact that we have the monosized beads, but also because we are an ISO 13485 certified company. So we have very, very high uh, level of uh, control for uh, process and procedures and behavior. So that is one of the reasons that we are often uh, preferred for commercial use. And all the beads, since they are magnetic, they can of course <laughs> be used on the Kingfisher instruments. And I will show you a few of them uh, on a few slides. Um, we do have a few other um, product areas that we will not go into any details today, but I just want to highlight, we do have a lot of ready to go kits in the market for cells and exosomes and proteins. But if you don't find the product that you're looking for, then you can basically use any antibody with our products and or biotinylated antibody. And as we will talk about streptavidin today, then it's the biotinylated ligands that uh, have to be used. 
So as I mentioned, we do have products for other um, areas as well. And I'm not going to go into any specific details, but I want to show you that we have a vast range for isolation of cells, both depletions and negative isolations, and also positive isolation where the beads can be removed. Uh, then we have also many products within protein purification, especially Dynabeats Protein A and Protein G are one of our most sold products, uh, especially in Japan. We also have some co-IP kits. We have Histag and of course, Deptavidin beads can be used here as well. Um, we also have a large um, portfolio of surface activated beads. They have different chemical chemistry, depending on what you want to bind to the beads. Also on the nucleic acid side, we do have several different products, um, including uh, mRNA isolation beads. We have the oligo DT. Uh, the silent beads are very a uh, lot used in nucleic acid research. Um, and we also, as I mentioned, streptavidin beads can be used for that. And we will have some applications on that downstream afterwards, in addition to exosomes that we also will go into in a few slides. Now, I hope this worked um, because um, there's something wrong with my other screen. Uh, I did have a video here, but uh, since my screen is not showing on the other one, I won't be able to show exactly that video right now. Uh, but it basically uh, shows you what is shown here on the pictures. Uh, it does show that you have the magnetic beads that you have in your tube and you add your, the sample to it. You have a very short incubation depending on the applications, maybe 10 to 20 minutes. Then the bind, um, the beads will bind to your target. You put it onto the magnets uh, and then um, you can elute uh, the sample, the solution out from that tube and your beads will your target will be stuck on the side of the tube. And in this way, you can wash several times to have a very, very high uh, purity of the sample. And you can also el elute this in, in lower sample volumes. You can start with high sample volumes and concentrate to a low volume if you want to do that. 